Hello there, Annette. Welcome to Sands. And today we've got something special to show you. But first, to help differentiate between the two of us, we have our horrible Jackstone minifigures sitting out. I'm Taylor, the voice you hear oh so often. And I'm Corbin. Usually you don't hear my voice. You might have heard me in either the background or some giveaways, some giveaways, but I can't really work around it today because we're doing a LEGO Room Studio Tour. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how the naming convention works out on that, but we're going to do it anyways. Alright, before we get started, we've got some stuff we got to go over first. Well, and first, the thing is, not everything LEGO or LEGO related that we own is in here. The room's a little bit small. So a few things are around the house. Don't worry though, Corbin will make sure that he shows them in this review type deal. Second is, this is our first time on camera, so just, you know, stick with us and don't make fun of me too much. Uh, third is the audio. This room, it's really echoey. Real bad. Tried to fix it before, but nothing we've come up with so far has worked. So just don't complain a whole lot. Okay, so I'm gonna hand the reins to Corbin and he's gonna go over the goods. Yeah, let's get started with this wall. And we're over at this wall. And this side of the room's probably the most boring until we reach the corner, which is literally inches away. But we'll start here. The pink box is a recent thrift store find with a bunch of brand new stuff. And the board was meant to go on the wall, but this wall is a pain to stick stuff on. Um, each container, the first one is a broken down set of the Geonosin landing pad that needs to be fixed, then Hobbitons in the head, then the Rancor Pit in Jabba's Palace is in that box, that also needs to be fixed, and then over there are some bagged animals, and imp the Emperor Palpatine's throne that also needs to be fixed. We recently moved and a lot of stuff did not survive that well, so there's a lot of stuff on the list that still needs to be repaired. Now, we get to go on to my favorite part, the organized section. This took a heck of a long time to do. Several months to go through a giant plastic bin and separate all this stuff out from collecting of years and years of Lego. First we have the Stud box. Just a bunch of different colored studs, and that's actually my favorite part of the room because it just looks so good. And then we have a bunch of squares, and then random things. We have a bunch of random stuff in here, like cones and cylinders, or, I don't know, fence pieces and other pieces with studs on the side, uh, flat pieces, uh, jumper plates, teeth, grills, dishes, all of our different clips, printed sticker pieces, which we have way more than we should, and then a lot or more animals, smaller ones mainly, and plant life and rocks. Then, then we have this blue full of all of our these separators. And here is the colorful part. Probably not as exciting, but we have it organized by color and brick sized. In the first row, we have one by sixes and then the angled pieces. And then the next one would be the one by one, one by two, two by two, all the way down to two by four. And then you also have the different colors. So it's red, then the different shades of red and orange, yellow, green, different shades of green, purple, blue, and then tan brown and dark tan white two shades or four shades of gray with old light gray old dark gray and then the other two new grays black and then here we have our bigger bricks it's kind of cram packed with space but anything that is not your average size brick then we have our cylinders these are enormously enormously Annoying to store. That's why they're not in there. We tried several different test runs and these things are just a pain. Square, squares do not fit into circles. Or circles do not fit into squares. All these squares make a circle. All these squares make a circle. Then we have arches, which is also crammed, packed. Just a bunch of different types of arches. Half arches, full arches, small, big, large. 
we'll leave it like that. Next we have anything bigger than up there. So these are one by eights, I think. Just a ton of them. Then we have even longer. So we have, I don't know, up to 12, I believe. And here we have bigger bricks. And it looks pretty separated like that. Next we have slopes, red and other dark shades of red, mul or multiple colors, including some Fabuland roofs, blue and clear, or clear blue and dark blue, brown, tan, orange, all those, white, black, and now we have, oh this is a mop from Instagram. Now we have more pieces. These are all the different dark gray, or gray slopes that we have. Um, they are separated more because they are used more frequently. And then we'll start on this side. This is mostly flat plates under the gray. So circular, bigger circles, half circle, half square, angles, um, all the different plates with holes in them. Then we have the one by two flats and then two, or one by three, and then all the way down till two by four. And then here we have different various studs. This is the mixed bag, the ugly duckling of sorting. We have a bunch of Technic pieces all the way through pins and axles, I think they're called. And then we have bricks with the axle holes, bricks with the pin holes, more bricks with the pin holes. And then this is the plate section or the tile plate, tiles, where they're smooth, all the way through. The, this section are different bricks, so these are the ones with the jagged edges that's stuck. These are the ones with the ripples, kind of look like bamboo or wood. These are my favorite, brick bricks. They're brick bricks. These have holes or angles through them, or not or slits cut out through them. These are all rounded at the top. Here we have bigger bricks with studs on the side. And then these are the definitely miscellaneous. These are the bionicle slash normal system bricks. And then these are system bricks with pins on the end with both. These are the connectors and female nail parts. Here, I don't know the name of these, but we have the round ones, and then we have the bigger ones on that one. Down here, we have all of the spare sub launchers. If you don't want them, we'll take them. I have no idea what we're going to do with them, but I want... I... Next, we have chains and ropes, and other miscellaneous flexible tubes. Here we have launchers, cannons and such, different fires and waters and energy things, seats, we have seats, and then round pieces that I don't have a name for. Before we move on to the figures, we also have a box full of droid parts, a box full of droids, Ooh. Tapes, trading cards that are Lego themed, miscellaneous head pieces and a few other things, some miscellaneous Star Wars stuff, and then miscellaneous Avatar, the last Airbender stuff, which is phenomenal by the way. Now we move to the figures which you probably are more excited for. Starting on the Star Wars half of things. Oh, if you're wondering, these are old drawers from factories nearby that they would use for screws and such different miscellaneous parts when they were putting things together. So I have some of those to put up. We have a mix of, these aren't necessarily our rarest, but more of our rare figures are here. Uh, more of our favorite figures, some of our first figures, um, such as the Luke, Han, Lando, and Leia. They are from the original Jabba Sail Barge that I had when I was younger, or such as Jabba. Then we have things that we like, like some of our 501st with my original custom 501st figure which looks awful. Or a port, or Sebulba's, or the Sith, or the best Jedi ever, Jedi Bob. Or, you know, some of our holiday, well, 
most of our holiday figures, um, the older Boba Fett, and then just a random mix of people like Trevor Coleman, um, Fle or Yellow Leia, Qui Gon, Embo, um, some different Wookies, just a mix of different characters. Then on the beneath it, we have the Rancor on a Bionicle stand because he flops over like crazy. A race car dude, I just really like him. And our Game of Thrones characters. A lot of these are just different actors that play in Game of Thrones. We want to collect them all. There's about eight to ten of them. We have five of them here. And then someone for an outfit that doesn't belong. And then on the next section, we have most of our black plates that aren't already in use. We have, I feel like we were probably the only person to have the first wave of Nexo Knights, even though we only have. Then we have some collectible minifigures from the newest wave. Some 10, or, or 10, 30, and 50 bricks. Happy Holiday Stand. One of my first Bionicles that I got that wasn't a handy-down. And then we have the miscellaneous figures. We have some of the miscellaneous figures, like some aliens, Indiana Jones, an old city chef that was my older brother, some Santas, Groot and Rocket, Woody and Buzz, some, probably one of my favorite battle packs of all time, Star Wars included, the Army Troopers, the... One of two figures we actually ended up with from one of the two, he's actually the most expensive and rarest of them all, surprisingly. Or the pre-order bonus from the Cap or Lego Parts of the Caribbean set. Uh, the same Bionicle in minifig form from down there. Uh, Junior's Mickey Mouse, some Micro Fighters, a Duplo Winnie the Pooh, some other figures. Bizarro Batman, Deadpool, which many of you probably like. Taylor and Corbin, the... Claptrap from Borderlands that our good friend Taylor here made, or the most of the Incredibles, most of the Avatar The Last Airbender characters, which, again, are great, some of the Spongebob characters, and then we have a row of Lord of the Rings, some empty spots for um, more figures in the future, we're still missing one of the turtles, here we have some of the Lego Movie characters sitting next to some of the Jurassic World and Steve. We have the whole line from the mystery series of Harry Potter and the Fantastic Beasts. We have the Fantastic Beasts, some Ninjago characters, and I uh, like the Sushi Man. We have on the top some different miscellaneous things like R2-D2 and hieroglyphics or the hot dog man with a hot dog cart. Different big figs that wouldn't fit down there. Some silver Duplo bricks. One of our only few Duplo bricks. Uh, Coca-Cola machine, just different, random, various things. And now we have stuff underneath the table. Here we have our plates that aren't normal, so like the Batman plates, orange big ones, YouTube, and then just different plates, like some island plates that we really like, some older ones that we don't use that often. Then in each drawer there is a separate thing. Here we have minifigures and minifigure parts that aren't put together. Next we have a bunch of bionicle parts that are mostly broken down. We have a bunch of mm, somewhat separated plates that need to be worked through more. Some more plates that definitely need to be worked through more. Then we have some random miscellaneous parts that just don't fit anywhere else. Just we don't know where else to put them. And then on the bottom we have cars and plane parts and a lot of them. Moving on we have our box full of minifigures. That isn't, that is separated, so we have our first order, a bunch of clones, um, the resistance and some droids, Ninjago, DC, custom figures, Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit, some castle figures, uh, the CIS or from Star Wars, um, different city and mystery figures, the Empire, we have random various figures from Lego themes, micro and nano figures in there, these are all themes, so we have different Indiana Jones, Jurassic World, stuff like that, Harry Potter, mostly from the new series, we are not huge into Harry Potter, but we have a few of them, we have some Marvel, and then some original trilogy, Old Republic, and prequel, and then ones that need to be separated down. 
And then we have a box full of weapons and different accessories for our figures. Seems like we have too many of those, but then we have our Quattro box with Quattro, and then some then random or more parts, so containers, and then a bunch of light bricks or a bunch of those uh, wooden looking bricks, just a bunch of extras that we have in there that either we have too much and it wouldn't fit, or we didn't know where else to put them. And then in the back we have some boxes. We don't usually keep many boxes. We don't have an infin affinity for them. But we have some dimensions and adventure time and our one and only super box. Then we have our one and only big base plate, some windows, and then more sets that either need to be fixed from the move or broken down. That clear box is what all of our Legos were held in during the summer before we separated them. And in the blue box, we need we have more sets that we either need to fix or break down. Some boats, an airplane. Here is a container of dirty parts. They either have dust on them or some random gunk. We're not entirely sure, but they need to be cleaned. Here is a box of mostly complete sets that are small or we just don't have them on display right now. Here are some, well actually, Hobbit or Lord of the Rings sets that need to be fixed, like the entirety of Lake Town, they're all in here. And then here we have bags and instructions. It's heavy and there's some stuff in the way, like some posters, but just full of instructions. And that's not even all of the ones we've ever had. We actually misplaced or threw some away. And then on the top of it, we have just a few random things that don't have a spot right now. And now let's move on to the shelves. Okay, here's where most of our sets that are complete are, most of the bigger ones. Um, we have a lot that have been broken down over the years that need to be either completely rebuilt or fixed. Those are in the boxes as you just saw, but we'll start at the top. Here is our book collection. We have not too many. We actually lost some in the move, but we do have a few left. Here is a target box for minifigures, some board games. That one we reviewed. You can check it out. We have a flashlight, two clocks, Brickley, salt and pepper shaker, banana man. Um, some goldfish, best snacks in the world, and if you don't like them, then please stop watching the channel. And I stand by that 100%. And we also have a lunchbox, which we'll take a look at in a minute. We have some, our next shelf are mostly our video games, Lego video games that we have. So, a lot of them we have covered, like, we have covered the vi Lego movie video game, Jurassic World, Lord of the Rings, and a few other, you can check those all out on our channel. Here is one of our few, rather, two Funko Pops we own. I only have it because it was a limited edition Star Wars 3 box, so I had to get it. Sans, mini kid in the background, don't pay attention to the top. First off on this miscellaneous shelf we have Yoda, my favorite character. I have all the Yodas except the New York I Love one from the New York Comic Con Toy Fair. I really would like it, but I don't have enough money for it. The only brickheads we own because I can't get sucked down that wormhole. Some more Fantastic Beasts, some of the Lego tapes, some old instructions, a don't worry button. Um, a truck that I modified a little bit, I just really like, a trailer I made, and a Kids Fest 2013 t-shirt. And then, the next shelf we have a boat or a car ferry that I just really like with some different cars like a pizza truck, and a Mickey Mouse car, a piggy bank, a Hans Christensen book purchase that you could get, the Adventure Time build -a -build or Buildable Adventure Time people, a Lego store, one of the only Jurassic Park sets not including Jeff Goldblum. And then we have the Shelob hanging up, and next shelf is also kind of... Next we have both the Ant-Man sets, um, the wolf in the back from Thor Ragnarok, a uh, snow truck I just like, Smog. A dragon from Ninjago, and the only Lego pod we have of Batman, and he is looking mighty fine. Next we have the Minecraft shelf. We are big fans of Minecraft, we don't have a ton of sets of them, and this is just a little bit of a display to show that we do like Minecraft. Next shelf is Lord of the Rings and Hobbits. And it is not entirely Lord of the Rings and Hobbits. We have the Lonely Mountain and most of the big figs in there and some other creatures. The other one is a shell or a chess game. We would have more Lord of the Rings and Hobbit sets in there, but as you saw earlier, they are pretty rough. On the next shelf, we have some 
miscellaneous and random Star Wars sets, mostly ships, but we do have Octo or uh, Moss Eisley, but there are a lot of Confederacy vehicles in there. So, on the next shelf, starting from the bottom, top, starting from the top, we have all of the stand figures from this current wave of them. I really hope they make more. I'm happy that we have them all. It's probably one of our most complete collections. Then we have a Star Wars at, -AT or at at if you prefer, a big bionicle that just doesn't fit on the next shelf. Uh, strange, but I do like it, a uh, TIE Fighter, a Mandalorian ship, Coruscant, my favorite Star Wars planet, and our only Avatar set that we have, the Fire Nation ship. And I have wanted this thing for a long time, and I got it a few months ago, and it is massive. We will have a review on it in the future, but I can't promise how far away that is. On the next shelf, we have buildable figures and Bionicle. Well, rather, Bionicle that is still put together. So, a giant T-Rex being ridden, or some of the older ones, or we have the General, Luke and Darth Vader, Jin and Jin. Next shelf, we have mostly Starfighters. So we have Anakin Starfighters, we have a review of that as well. Yoda Starfighter, and then the Solo Speeder Collection, and we have a review of that as well. Huh, neat. Next we have mostly Re Rebel and Resistance ships. We have Rey and Luke's uh, Land Speeder, an A-Wing, flying an A-Wing. Poe's X-Wing, a Y-Wing, the U-Wing, our UCS Millennium Falcon. Oh, yeah, 800 bucks, worth it. Next we have our Imperial slash First Order shelf. We have the Snow Speeder, some Imperial tanks in the background, Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. We have the or an older one, but it is currently not together. Death Star, an older set, which you can see on Instagram if you want. And a uh, hover tank, and our UCS Imperial Shuttle. E.G. your heart out, MNR. Here we have our Old Republic Sith ship. Dusty boy which is kind of dusty. Then we have our drop ship from the First Order, and Rin's ship, and then two more Imperial Star Destroyers. Next shelf we have our ATT, our gunship, and a Republic hover tank without the stickers on it for some reason, I'm not entirely sure. And on the final shelf we have the turbo tank, Ion Cannon, a little walker in the back that was custom by Taylor, a Z95 Headhunter, and an ATDP. And underneath this shelf we do actually have our other Old Republic Jedi Starfighter, and it's we just haven't found a spot for it yet. Moving on to the next wall. Lastly we have our lunchbox full of goodies. Inside there are some things that don't really fit, like some holiday season stuff, Easter, a luggage tote, Young Vitruvius, Dice, McDonald's, Prince, Kids Fest Band, a brick separator in a bag, pins, Broken Darth Vader, some miscellaneous poly bags that we haven't opened. Erasers and pins and the brick from the new book that a friend gave to us, which we really appreciate because the book was expensive. Lastly, we have Chase McCain. So I may have lied to you earlier. This is probably the most barren, boring wall. At least the other one had a lot more Legos involved. This is where we record our videos. It is kind of bare, but I mean, we have our level so we can make sure the camera's level when we record our minifigure stand turntable or turning spire. We have the dimensions board for my room, one of the few Lego things in my room. The, well, chameleon and stitch and base plate from Taylor's room, one of the, or the only Lego thing in his room. A table where we set our stand. And here we have our rubbish bin where we throw all of our broken parts and frames for small parts because I am a hoarder and I can't get rid of them. We use this light to shine and make our sets brighter. We have up here a magnet to hide a nail. We don't have a use for the nail. Uh, the 
The background is paper, so in case it's marked beat up or anything, you can just roll it down and tear it off. You can see we have some padding on the walls. We That was our attempt to buffer the sound. It didn't work, they just kept falling off. And then our last bit of Lego, we have a rose gold and silver brick, an old Luke Skywalker, a Nexo Knight shield holder, and our dad's classic Spaceman keychain. And that's it for the Lego studio room. Let's check out the other areas. And um, here we have our shipping station. It's right outside the room. We have boxes and packages and miscellaneous objects. We have some future giveaways up here. Um, more padding for sound, which did not last. And then different things we need for the room, like tape, scissors, pen, pencil. Finally, for the last part of our collection, we have the entirety of our dimension sets. We have about 70% of all available sets that were released. We are working towards getting them, but they are no longer available, so we do not have them all. We have all of the play sets, though, that came to go, that came to switch the board out. Then we have some of the Ghostbusters, all the Doctor Who, some DC, well, quite a few DC, the Harry Potter, Chase McCain, all of the Adventure Time, Scooby-Doo, most of the Simpsons, some 80s themes, Portal. Powerpuff Girls, some more 80s themes, Lego Movie, our two rarest, the San Diego Comic-Con Green Arrow, and then a PS4 limited edition Supergirl, and then we have a few more, like Sonic and Jurassic World. Hey, wasn't that fun? You know it was. And, well, you know, thanks for watching. If you guys liked what you saw, you should leave a like. If you really liked it, you should leave a comment telling us what your favorite part is and what you envy the most. Uh, you should definitely make sure that you subscribe. Um, also, check out our other videos. We've got some great LEGO stuff you should go check out. And uh, make sure to watch out for upcoming videos. I've been Taylor with Sands. And Corbin. Thanks for watching.